Welcome to Joanna's DIY Life. I am glad you are here. Today, we are going to be making dish towel toppers. And these are fun to make so you can change out your towels, you know, to be decorative through the seasons. I love them. So I'm going to show you three styles, or I have three styles, three patterns, but I'm only going to be doing two, I think. So we are going to be doing spring towels because the season is spring. So let's get started. This is going to be so fun. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this is the pattern that you'll have. Um, it'll be available on my Facebook group that you are free to join and I would love it. And you can post your projects over there when you get done. Um, we'd all love to see you know, what's going on, share ideas and things like that, you know, just have fun. Um, keep it clean, though, or you will be booted. And if you do not answer the questions, you will not get accepted. Sorry, but I have to make sure that you're not a scammer and blah, blah, blah. You know how it is. So I've got a chunk out of mine. But anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to need your fabric and then you're going to need your towel. Okay. This was from the Dollar Tree last year and I never got a chance to use it. Now, you want to fold it in half. If you can find a half, I mean, it is a Dollar Tree towels. <laughs> no offense, but, you know, we'll, do, we'll deal with that later. First thing is this right here. So, your pattern will tell you cut on fold. So, you'll put your shoulders on the fold, okay? And then you're going to leave this open. So, what you're going to do is you want a piece long enough to fold. Get that out of the way so I don't cut my cord. Okay, so you know you want a piece to fold, so you want it that big and that big, and then you're going to want a piece for uh, if you want a ruffle. So I'm just going to cut my fabric off to here to make sure I have enough, okay? And then I am going to lose my pattern on the other side of the table, of course. Uh you know, things just happen, but I am going to take my mini steam and I am going to iron all my wrinkles out of my fabric, okay? So when I get that done and get my pattern out of the floor, I'll be right back with you, I promise. Okay, so we're somewhat ironed and I have regained my pattern from the floor. Fold my fabric in half. Selvage to selvage, that's the fuzzy edge to the fuzzy, fuzzy edge. You know that's the side, and I want to fold it down. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both of these at the same time, okay? So, now if you had fabric that had print, okay, say this, was all going the same way and it had writing on it, you'd have to cut four of them so that they would be back to back the right way. Otherwise, one would be upside down. So you'd have a right side and a wrong side. So this is going to give me one and this is going to give me one, which I need two. And it says cut on fold. Okay, so I'm a miser. So I am going to make sure that I have enough fabric to do two but use as less fabric as I can because I'm that way so I'm just going to keep maneuvering that looks pretty good to me so you want to make sure this is together first of all okay and then put your pattern right up to the edge all right make sure it's nice and straight you don't want a wonky a wonky dress and you need to pin and this is why I love these little flat pins they don't pop my fabric up I love them love 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 them anything that I am using except fabric and patterns of course are in my Amazon store under the sewing part um, that little iron might be under the vinyl area. I have a lot of sections. I sectioned it off for you to make it easier for you. But anyway, you just want to pin this 
so you can cut it, okay? Sorry you had to make me watch that. I mean, you didn't make me watch that. Sorry I made you watch that. <laughs> ah, I'll be all right one day. Okay, now you just want to cut this out. And if you have smaller scissors, it helps to take smaller snips to get around that curve. That's easy peasy. So I'm just going to finish cutting this out and I'll be right back. Now you will have your pattern pieces, okay? So if you flip these, this is what you got. Okay, you're going to take both of your pieces. I'm just going to show you on one, okay? But you're going to take both pieces and before you sew anything, you want to pull up an edge and make sure you make this edge and that edge the same because they have to match, okay? And just press this under one time is good because you're gonna leave this part open. And this just makes it easier than trying to do it later, okay? This is just my mindset. And you never know how that's gonna be. But anyway, <laughs> just saying. So you wanna match them, make sure they're about the same. And they are. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to the machine. I'm going to take this and I am going to add a few clips. You want to match this with this pretty even. And I'm just going to add a clip. Make sure these are matched and add your clip. And then, you know, make sure these are matched pretty good. And add a clip, okay? Come to the other side and add your clips. And then we're going to go sew this. When we sew this, I always like to show y'all what we're doing. We're going to sew around here. Then we're going to come over here, go down and around, and then go down and around. So let's go. And I am going to go around the neck first while it's still pinned because it holds it, you know, for me pretty good. Needle in the middle. I want this on the edge. That's how I love to sew. Y'all should know that by my sew it Saturday, so let's go. Don't forget the back stitch. Back stitch again. Then go to your arm. Remove your pin or whatever you have in there. I'm going to go over a little more because I want a longer sleeve. So I'm just going to go, you know, all the way over, almost. Go down, pivot. Pinch so that that doesn't uh, move. Now, once you get it over your little humps here, if you have humps, put your finger down and then make sure you backstitch. That is very important on the end right there. Then just turn it over and do your other side. Now, let's go finish these. Now you are just going to take them. Oh, you have to clip the neck. Clip the curves, always clip the curves. I forget my curves. Make sure you do this for both pieces, okay? Don't clip your threads. Now just take your little dress thing 
and turn it all inside out or right side out. Not in, it is inside out. You turn it right side out, okay? Right side out. So do that for both pieces and iron them down. And see how this, when I ironed it and then sewed it, I mean, ironed it before I sewed it, now we don't have to fool with trying to flip it in and get it all even because it is even. So I'm going to turn these out and use my um, poker poker here to poke my corners out. Also, when you're clipping, clip your neck and clip your arm curve, okay? Or it won't lay flat. Okay, so we're all pressed and the easiest way I do this is to do my towels first so I have to deal with one part at a time okay so I am going to um, take my towel now you can put buttons on these or bows which I'll probably add a bow is what I'm gonna do okay and I'm gonna use snaps now if you want to use um, ribbon or fabric ties you would sew them in but well this would be this way you would sew it in here and leave the edge here when you flip it out then your tie or whatever is on the other side but we're using snaps so now I want to take my towel and like I said you want to fold it in half or half of what you know the Dollar Tree's half is their towels are not even. And then you're going to cut it straight across your fold. Now, you can do this on the machine or you can do it by hand. It's just as easy to do by hand. You're going to need button floss or I, of course, use um, dental floss. But what you want to do is you want to catch this edge and you just want to do a running stitch all the way across the top here. You know, it doesn't matter how long or anything. Just do your running stitch. This is a gathering stitch all the way across here. But make sure your thread is long enough so you can spread this out when you get it to your um, dress top, okay? And I'm going to show you a trick with these towels um, to where you can see the inside or the print, not the inside, the outside, the print. So I got my stitch in. But let me show you with this other half, okay? Now, since it has this print on it, you can fold and fold like we did the pot holder one. I will try to link that in my description. And you can just put that there, okay? So it would look like a straight thing. I like mine gathered. So the way I gather is I will gather more on the sides and less in the middle so that that makes my design stay out. You see what I'm saying? So when you stick this in here, you'll open this up. And you'll stick this in here. It's just easier for me to open it that way. All right, now it's in there. Flip it back down. Okay, now you can play with it and maneuver it how you want to. Make sure your towel stays in there and you want it. You can feel it here, okay? You want it kind of even. If you can get it even, you want it as even as possible. And I like to flick these down. And you notice I have not took my needle out yet. It is still right here. That's if I need to gather more. You can feel it, okay? You can feel it. See how I'm pulling to get my middle, you know, more flatter. There it went. You have to move it and play with it, I'm telling you. All right. It is bunchy in the corners, but that's okay. All right, now, 
I'm going to put a couple pins in here to hold this. And I'm not going to take you over there because you know the drill. Needle in the middle. I'm sewing along this edge to get just a little stitch right here. Now, if you have this right here, it's okay. Sometimes we miss. I'm just going to take fabric tack and I am going to tack that down. I'm going to do the other side. And I do want to tell you, if you leave your needle in like I did, your string, make sure you do not run it through your needle on your machine, okay? Make sure you don't do that. But just sew this side in once you get it up in there, just like you did the other side, okay? This side came out beautiful, both sides, okay? At this point, you can take this piece Put this piece on top of there, clip your strings, okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take it over to the machine and we're going to sew the shoulders right here. Sew these two together, okay. This stays open. Now you want to take this and you'll want to press these seams open, okay. Just iron those out is all you got to do. Now if you want to ruffle, you just take your fabric and I am going to rip, okay? I got to get this out of the way. I had to get it go over there and get it out. So I'm just going to leave this edge like it is and I'm just going to rip. You only need it on one side, okay? So I'm going to, and this keeps me from having to hem it. Sorry, that's loud. Okay. Make sure your strings is off. Now, if you want to do the, the hemming and then put it on, that's your business. I'm not about that right there. I want it about two and a half to three inches. Now I am going to take this fabric and I am going to gather it up. I don't need to mess with the edges. I'm going to gather it up just like I did this and I'm going to sew it onto here, okay? So all you do is you can do it on your machine, which I probably will, but you just go down some and go in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out. I will show you what a gathering foot does, and I guarantee you will love it, okay? Let me move you, and I'll show you. This right here is a gathering foot, okay? This is what it looks like. They have one that's a snap-on. I can't get it to work, no matter what I do. So I don't use it, because I don't like it. You drop your screw back here and then take your whole assembly off, okay? And then you slide this on your needle, I mean, uh, your presser foot bar. Tighten your screw tight. You can put it down to make sure it's all the way down because you got to make sure that it's on correctly and then tighten. You want to go down in it and pick up your thread that's on the bottom, okay? Trust me, it's there. Oh, that's too big. It's back there, okay. Now, what you wanna do is you need your needle in the middle or all the way over to the edge. Now, I like mine all the way over that way, okay? So I'm going to move it. That gives me room. You have to have your tension on a nine. It's 
sorry, that took me a minute, and your length as long as it'll go, okay? So tension on nine, length as long as it'll go. Now watch this magic. Make sure your back don't come around. Do not back stitch and just turn till you can pull your thread. Don't pull any other threads and then cut it off. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now you are simply going to place this right above that right there. Make sure you're hitting it. Okay, come up some. That'll go down about that far. Make sure you keep this even and pin it. You, you're going to sew along your edge where you stitched. You're going to sew where your stitches are, okay? So make sure you get this on. You can tighten it, but I'm not. I just cut it off. So I'm going to go back here and make sure it's right and then stick a pin. Go down here, make sure it's right, stick a pin. You can feel your edge. You gotta make sure that your stitch is above that edge right there. That's all you gotta do. And then pin, okay? Now this last step right here is I'm going to cut over some, because you see it comes out that way. Cut over some and just rip and cut. And then you can push that over and get it where you need it to go. Now all you have to do is go to your machine and sew right along this stitch line right there. Change your foot out and stitch right along that stitch line. Now our beautiful little ruffle is sewn on and we can add our snaps. So with these snaps you get two parts like this. And then you get what's called a male and a female. Mine are Babyville, but they're the same as cam snaps. And I just took mine and put it on this platform here to um, push it in. Now you want to put one here. And just push it through all that fabric. And I have a pin that I took the middle out of to push it down. And it goes right around it. Then you put one or the other on, on there. Now this is thick, so you'll have to push it. Now all you gotta do is take your pliers, put that on your, the buttons on the black part, and then this comes down, and then you push. And that sets your middle, smushes your middle. I don't even know if you could see it, but it smushes your middle so your snap stays on, okay? And then you'll want to do that again to the other side, putting on the opposite, and this goes on the outside as well. Push through the fabric. You might have to bring it up some. So it will come out. Phew. And then pop your cap on there. Carefully place it back under and push this one down.
one snap on. Now do the same to the other side. I want to show you what they look like and how they work when they're not in a contraption like that. These are drits. Make sure that you put the two together. You're male and female, male and female, okay? Otherwise, you won't be able to snap it. So, put this in. Like I said, these are hard. Now, put your piece on top, okay? Now, when you put it in your machine, this is what you'll do. The black part catches the cap, and then that part smooshes the middle. And then you squeeze. But I cannot squeeze hard enough. So I have to put mine on this, and then I can push my whole body down. See what I'm saying? You don't want to push so hard that you break it. But anyways, now, we can snap. Oh, that's cute. You just put it over your, over your um, stove handle, oven handle, and there you go. That is so stinking cute. Okay, now, I'm using pink lace because it's what I had on hand, okay? So I'm just going to take my lace and I'm just going to make a cutesy little bow right here, okay? That's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to take my little flossy flossy. And I'm going to go around and make my center. Now you can glue this on. You can sew it on. Whatever you choose to do. While I have this on, I am just going to sew it. I'm going to put it in the middle. I hope it's in the middle. And I hope you don't see me. And I'm just going to go in down by the bow. Go around. Dad gum. Okay. Got that that way. Go back around close to it. Come back up. Go back down close to it. Without catching all your stuff. Do that two or three times and just tie it off back here and your bow is attached. And there it is. Now how darling is that? That is cute. I love it. There are two more patterns that I'm going to upload. And this one is a rounded towel topper. And this one is an envelope style towel topper. And I'm going to do the rounded one. I don't have a towel, but I'm going to do the topper for you, okay? And I am going to use this fabric that I got at Walmart last year, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and fold it right sides together. Now when you do this, you're going to need interfacing. You cut four of fabric, two of interfacing, okay? So I'm going to fold my fabric in half. Now when you fold this over, your truck's going to be upside down, right? So if you cut one upside down, when you fold it over, your truck will be right. So we're going to cut two right ways and two wrong ways, okay? Because this is printed fabric. So we want two right, two wrong. Let me pin this and cut it. And then I'll cut two of another fabric. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've got my two fabrics. You want them side by side or, you know, right sides together, as even as possible. And then you'll want to cut your piece of interfacing. Now me, personally, I love fusible interfacing, which is what I thought I had, but I have it in a lightweight. And this really, you know, could stand to be a medium weight. 
So, um, I'm going to make mine fusible by spraying it. I love 505 spray, so I am going to spray my interfacing. This is medium weight interfacing, but it is not fusible. So I'm going to take a piece that's big, like I need it, and I'm going to cut it off. And then I am going to spray this piece carefully. I love how it's rolling up. That way it can control my spraying. Just give it a good spray. Now it's fusible. Now you'll want to take this, lay it on top of these. Okay. Now if it was fusible, you would iron it down but mine is not fusible. But it needs to be on that side. So when you flip it, it will be on the inside of this thing. Okay. So now you want to cut your fusible interfacing out and make sure your fabric does not shift on you. Okay. So cut this out. Now that you have it all nice and cut out, it's cut out great. I'm going to do what I did to the other one. I'm going to flip this up. First, I'm going to pin all of this, or actually, I'm going to clip it so that it doesn't move on me. Now, you can flip this up, give it a press. Now, I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to pull this up right where it belongs to the edge of this one and iron this side down. Now I'm just going to go and sew all the way around this and I'll be back. Quick tip, when you sew interfacing, make sure you sew interfacing side up because your feed dogs do not like it. Okay, so now that we have this this way, we have to clip these curves. So starting at these points, you just clip. This will make for easy turning and make it flat. Make sure you don't clip your thread, but we must clip, okay? Now, flip it inside out. Push your seams out very, very well, okay? Very, very well. Because this one, we will be top stitching. Top stitching means you just put a thin stitch close to the edge and it's a decorative stitch to make it look better and stay flat, okay? So that's what that stitch is for. Can't find my thing, so I'm just going to use my scissors. Make sure you get as flat as you can because it's going to look nicer when you're done. And these make awesome gifts for birthdays, friends, family, Christmas time whatever. They're nice. I'm telling you. Iron everything flat. Let's give it a good pressing. All right. Oh, it's, oh, I love it. So I'm going to do my top stitching. Oh, now on this one, you would take and insert your towel. And on this, you can either put a buttonhole right here and put a button on there. Oh, wrong way. Or you can use a snap. This folds down where it starts to get square. So your towel would be in this way. This would be folded down. Your snap or your buttonhole goes here. Your snap or your button goes here. Then your towel's in there and it hangs just like that right nicely. You can pull it down farther if you want to. And it's so stinking cute. I love it. But I want my truck to show, so I'm probably going to put it up here. At least want one truck, okay? So when I put my towel in, that's what that will look like, okay? Now, since I didn't have a towel for the other one, I went ahead and did this one and put this towel in. The only thing I want to tell you is I did pleats and sewed the pleats before I put it in there, made sure it fit. And then when you put these snaps on, you have to, forgive me, I'm doing this one-handed. You'll put the snaps on before you put the towel in, okay? 
and then you'll fold this and then put this snap on and then I put this one on first and then I push this down and then I flipped it over without this being there I took my pin that I had and I pushed down and poked a hole where this one would go down in I hope that makes sense and then I was able to put it in the correct spot and there it is this is what it would look like over your oven overlook my room this isn't my stove but ain't that cute you can add lace or whatever you want to do and this is the other one and how stinking farmhouse is that that is so cute so anyways that's how you do them and they're fun well i hope you had fun i know i did and if you like this video you know the drill give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel ring that bell so you don't miss anything and until next time you are a blessing goodbye